from Hollywood. The Jack Benny Program. With Jack's special guest, Phil Silvers. Look, I, I don't care about your problem. All I know is you're the makeup department. You were supposed to have a barber in my dressing room 20 minutes ago. He's not here yet. Well, see that he is, or there'll be trouble. Can't understand why I can't get any service around here. Gee, look at the fire in my eyes. <laughs> It's hard to believe that in just 10 minutes, I'll be out on that stage and be the lovable Jack Benny again. Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello. About time you got here, you know. I'm sorry that I'm late, but coming down the hall, I ran into a woman and she had an appendix attack and I had to operate. <laughs> You had to operate on her? Well, with this coat and the bag, they thought I was a doctor. <laughs> oh, sure, sure, they thought you were a doctor. Can imagine. Come on, now shave me. Okay, well, I put on my rubber gloves. <laughs> Just shave me, that's all. Say, doctor, rubber gloves. <laughs> One chin. What are you doing? After I'm through shaving you, I'll count again. Stop taking inventory. Just shave me. Okay, okay. <laughs> Mr. Benny? Yes? I understand you've, uh, you've got Phil Silvers on your show tonight? <laughs> yeah, Phil is my guest star. Oh, boy. That'll be a pretty funny show, huh? Yeah, I think it'll be funny. Of course, I come out first, you know, and I do my monologue. Uh -huh. Then you introduce Phil Silvers, huh? No, no, not yet. <laughs> then I have Don Wilson come out, and then we do a kind of a funny bit uh -huh. there. Then Phil. <laughs> no. Oh. No, then I do the violin bit, a bit with my violin, you oh. see. And then, uh, uh -oh. what's the matter? I think I cut you. <laughs> you think you cut me? <laughs> well, can't you tell? Well, it would help me if you'd bleed a little. <laughs> I'm not going to force myself just for you. <laughs> now, be quiet, will you, while I, while I go over my monologue. Uh, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Then Phil comes. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and, and welcome to our show. Um, now, before we go into our... Hey, Jack, you better hurry. It's almost show time. Well, don't worry about it, Don. I'll only be a couple of minutes here. Well, but that'll only give you three minutes to make yourself lovable. Oh, no, it won't take that long. Because, you see, I, um, I, I didn't get uh, very angry today. Uh, the Jack Benny crew was wanted on stage, and the barber is wanted in surgery. <laughs> surgery? I thought he was kidding. Gee, that must be the, uh, the uh, studio's medical plan. Part of it, anyway. Oh, say, by the way, Jack, is uh, Phil Silver still complaining about the script? Yes, he's always complaining. He doesn't like the script, and he's angry because he's on so late in the show. Well, after all, Jack, it's your show. You should be on there first. Well, of course I should be on there first, but Phil doesn't realize that. He wants to be the first one on. Attention, Jack Benny cast. One minute to air time. Oh, oh, Don, we only got a minute. Give me my shirt, will you? Okay. <laughs> my tie over there, will you? All right. Hey, how's this one? Huh? Yeah, that's all okay. right. Nice blue one. And, Don, you better get me my, my pants. Your pants? Yeah. They're right over there. Where are they? Over, over there. Hang it by that coat. <laughs> oh, 
I don't see any pants, Jack. They're not here. They are, too. I put them right there by the coat. Well, they're not here now. What do you mean they're not there? I put them there just now. Well, they're not here. I don't see them anywhere. Well, where did you take them? I didn't take them anywhere, Jack. <laughs> you know who I am. In a moment, you'll meet the star of the show, Gypsy Rose Benny. You know, I really hated to do this, but Jack's fans are so old, it's dangerous to keep them waiting. <laughs> I haven't been on a panty raid since I left college. You get a load of this material? Unfinished payments. I really feel like a heel, but should we see what's in the pocket? <laughs> Hmm, I guess he doesn't carry it around in his mouth anymore. <laughs> and then he says his money is all tied up. He ain't kidding. There's an obstacle course for pickpockets. <laughs> Phil. Yes, Jack. For heaven's sake, give me my pants, will you? Look, you put your head behind that curtain or I'll hand out baseballs to the audience. <laughs> oh. Oh. Such fiery eyes. <laughs> Look, should we try the back pocket where the wallet is? All those in favor, say aye. aye. Thank you, mystery fans. <laughs> Here we go. His driver's license. That'll tell us a few things. Jack Benny, hair, brown, height, five foot ten and a half, eyes, lazy lagoon blue. <laughs> Date of birth. Oh, I've been waiting for years to see this. Dave, this has been erased once too often. <laughs> Boy, he must have had this a long time. Get a load of this. Good for buggies, bicycles, and covered wagons. <laughs> hey, Phil. Phil, give me Jack's pants, will you? Why, Don? Well, he took mine. <laughs> Are you kidding? Jack's got your pants? You're darn right I have. <laughs> you who are civic-minded, keep your city clean, throw your trash in there. Phil, <laughs> you've got a lot of nerve oh, doing true. a thing like this. I mean, you spoil the whole show. Oh, Jack, I guess I was wrong. This is your show. I meant to have a little fun, and this show is so orderly, and here I am laughing it up. Please forgive me. And to show you I'm sincere, I'll just go off now and let the show go in its natural pace. And please, Jack, I know what a great host you are. I'll just go off quietly, unobtrusively. was choreographed by a chicken with his head cut off. <laughs> and the nerve of that guy, the gall of, of, of Phil Silvers, taking my pants and going through the pockets. I wonder what Don has in his pocket. <laughs> There's his wallet. Gee, it's kind of fat. What's in there? A lamp. <laughs> I should have known. Here. A shrimp cocktail? <laughs> Don! Oh, Don! Here, Jack. Come on out here. I can't come out like this, Jack. It's embarrassing. I don't care whether it's embarrassing or not. Come on out here. I won't do it. You will, too. Now, come here. Oh, all right. <laughs> Tight on you, aren't they? They must be. I'm two inches taller. <laughs> well, Don, the reason I called you out here, here's your here's your wallet. No. Oh, wait a minute, I'll get don't don't bend down. I'm in my pants. Don't bend down. There you are. 
Thanks. Wait a minute, Don. Don, come here. Come here. Look at I don't know why you're angry with me. It's all Phil Silver's fault. He's the one who stole my pants in the first place. I can't imagine him acting like that. After all that I did for him. After all you've done for him? What did you ever do for Phil Silvers? I'll tell you what I did. Years ago, when he came to California to try to get into show business, I'm the first one he got in touch with, even though we would never met each other. No kidding. That's right. I'll never forget the first time I ever saw Phil Silvers. In my scrapbook, when the doorbell rang. my childhood idol, the man who has lightened my dark hours on radio, the stage, the silver screen. Is this the home of Jack Benny? Yes, yes, it is. May I see him? <laughs> I'm Jack Benny. Oh, how could I have not recognized you? Oh, I'm so excited. My glasses must have got misty. Well, look, I'm kind of busy. Is there anything I can do for you? Well, the note. The note. Read the note. <laughs> Dear Jack, this will introduce Philip Silvers. He would like to get started in show business, and since he's the son of my next door neighbor and dearest friend, I would appreciate anything you can do for him. Love and Sudi. <laughs> so you're Philip Silvers. How are you? <laughs> And you know my Aunt Sudi. Oh, yes, she's a wonderful woman. <laughs> and Jack, since his mother was so wonderful to me during my recent illness, and since Philip is just getting started, would it be all right if he stayed at your house for a few days? Okay. Love, Aunt Sudi. A room with cross ventilation would be very nice. <laughs> Listen, you're getting a room with one window. It's upstairs at the end of the hall. Nothing on the main floor? No. Well, up we go. Ooh, these bags are heavy. What have you got in them? I don't know. I found them on the train. <laughs> you know, young Mr. Benny, you've been so nice. When I open them, we'll go have these. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the phone. May I use your phone? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Operator, would you get me New York City? Murray Hill 8, 2 -0. New York! <laughs> yes. Mommy, you'll want to know I got here safely. Well, you can write Mommy a letter. Oh, all right. Have I got any stationery? <laughs> I'll send it upstairs. Oh, swell. Now I'll go and freshen up. Then I'll come back and sit at the feet and bask in the radiance of a great star. <laughs> That's the first thing he said that made sense. <laughs> yes? His cab fare was six dollars. <laughs> six dollars? Why should I pay his cab fare? Well, you're not doing it for him. It's for your Aunt Sudi. <laughs> What's the matter with that guy, anyway? Doesn't pay his cab bill? Steals luggage from the... I'm going to call Aunt Sudi and see what this is all about. Uncle Jack? Yes? Can I borrow a suit of clothes? <laughs> <laughs> Seems I made a wrong choice of bag. <laughs> <laughs> that was my introduction to Phil Silvers. I thought there would be no harm in putting him up for a day or two, but two weeks later he was still there. The only thing that gave me hope was that each day he ate like he was leaving tomorrow. <laughs> As the weeks went by and he made no move to leave, 
Little things he did began to get on my nerves. Discovered my little secret. Now, Phil, stop with that. Now, listen. You came here to get into show business. What have you done about it? Nothing. Now, I'm going to give you two more days. And if you don't find a job, out you go. I wish you hadn't said that. What? The notes. Read the notes. <laughs> One more thing, Jack. Philip is sensitive, so don't rush him. <laughs> Let him take his time and feel his way around. Love and Sudi. Now, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Talking this way to the only son of the best friend your Aunt Sudi ever had? When your Aunt Sudi was sick, it was my mother who brought her chicken soup to help her get well. Every day, she brought her her chicken soup. Did she put a time limit on the chicken soup? <laughs> no. Every morning she got her chicken soup. He was right. I was ashamed. It was the first time in my life that I realized that chicken soup was thicker than blood. <laughs> Faded spring burst upon the scene. The crocus were in the fields, the birds were in the trees, and the worm was still in my house. <laughs> As I came in the door, I thought I had the wrong house. I wasn't greeted by that irritating how are ya. <laughs> Phil wasn't in the living room. Oh, Phil! Phil! I called and called, but I got no answer. <laughs> He was gone. Gone. I was so relieved. For the first time in months, my stomach felt as though it could retain food. <laughs> Jack, you're having in all the hot air. <laughs> what are you doing with those silly dark glasses? Uh, this silly light don't go out when you close the door. <laughs> gently, gently. <laughs> for the next few days, I didn't go home at all. If this was good enough for Bernard Baruch, it was good enough for me. <laughs> when I finally did go home, I could hardly believe my ears. Phil was on the phone, actually talking about a job. Well, you say it's all arranged with the entertainment director? Splendid. Now, what is it? Six weeks on tour, entertaining the troops. Wonderful. $200 a week? Well, thank you very much. Phil! Phil, you got a job. No, I got you a job. <laughs> I can't wait for that kind of dough. <laughs> well, I can't work yet. I can't go on tour. Well, you gotta go. You gotta get out of the house. We're getting on each other's nerves. <laughs> I don't know about getting on each other's nerves, but I know you're getting on my nerves. You were only supposed to be here a couple of days. Jack, I haven't been here so long. Oh, no. When you first came here, you had hair. <laughs> well, that's because I worry so much about your lovely Aunt Sudi. You see, she's been ill, and she hears you haven't been nice to me, she'll be upset. <laughs> well, 
All right. But, Phil, you've got to make some contacts. You've got to do something for yourself. You've got to make friends. <laughs> At least he took my advice about making friends. Night after night, they were there. All right, Charlie, I bet $200. You in? Phil, you were cleaned out last night. Where'd you get all this money? I don't know. I found one of those old things around the house. You know, one of these things, what do you call them? <laughs> Sold them to some joint for 75 bucks. <laughs> Stradivarius. Strat <laughs> you in? Hey, Jack, get that door, will you? All right, I want how many cars? Three. Three? Yeah. You? I'll take three, all right? Good. <laughs> Why didn't my key work? I had the lock changed. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. <laughs> well, Phil, aren't you going to say hello? Hello, hello, hello. All right? Hello. Come on, will you? What, are we going to be here all day? You in? Okay. Is this a way to say hello to this lady? I never saw this lady before in my life. Well, what do you want? What? Will you? Will you? Okay. Don't sit there like a clown, will you? <laughs> oh, you never saw this lady in your life? No. Well, Phil, I have news for you. This lady is Aunt Sudi. <laughs> Remember? Aunt Sudi and the chicken soup? <laughs> well, my glasses must have got misty again. <laughs> Got a note on you. I don't care about your note. Who's he? I'll explain it to you later. All right, Phil. You stay here long enough. Now come on, out. Out of this house. Well, wait a second, Jack. I got three keys. I don't care what you Now get out. Out of this house. Go on. Out. Right, out. Jack, you're right to be upset and angry with me, but don't humiliate me in front of my friends. Let me go out of here in my own way. With dignity. All right, go with dignity. my introduction to Phil Silvers. I finally got rid of him, but my Aunt Sudie stayed for the next 12 years. <laughs> gentlemen, I hope you all enjoyed the show, and I also want to thank my guest star, Phil Silvers. <laughs> oh, quiet. <laughs> Such a hand. You know, Silvers, Phil Silvers, isn't the only one that helped get started in show business. They helped Bob Hope, Ed Wynn, Weber and Fields, Sir Harry Lauder, <laughs> John Wilkes Booth. Well, I didn't exactly help. John Wilkes Booth, he just asked me if he could stay over to my house for a few days. <laughs> How did I know he was hiding out? <laughs> Good night, folks. I'll be seeing you soon. Friday night at 6.30 Eastern, Ida Lupino and Steve Cochran star in Private Hell on the 90-minute movie. Then at 8, it's Superbook. Now stay tuned for I Married Joan, right here on CBN Cable. <laughs>